From far and wide Oilers fans, this is Dolany TV. And welcome to another edition of Edmonton Oilers discussion here on Dolany TV. I'm Tyson. This is going to be a little bit more off the board. We've already done one of these way earlier in the season. Of course, we talked about Yes Pugliarvi. We talked about Joseph Gonbardella. That was with Matt Mozwich. And now today we're going to go revisit it. I'm going to revisit it just myself to kind of play into what I was getting at with the uh, defensive kind of side of things when I was saying we were going to be selling a lot of defense this month. Well, there's a reason because Bakersfield is allowing the Oilers a lot of options coming down the stretch to the trade deadline. Obviously, yeah, okay, if you're going to be a seller, your farm team's always going to allow you a lot of options. But I'm not necessarily saying in terms of being a seller because we are going to go take a look at the stats and I'm going to break this down player by player essentially what I mean because right now you go take a look at, we'll start with Andre Sekra who has played the two games down there. We knew he was going to. We don't know what the exact plan is from here on out. Maybe I should go double check Oilers Twitter right now as we make sure what the plan is for Andre Sekra. But two games, he's a plus five. So that's pretty important. And the Condors, uh, let's just go get this tweet from Bob Stoffer in here first. The Condors win their 12th straight with a 7-1 win over San Diego. That's what I mean. The, the Bakersfield Condors are doing a lot, a lot, right right now as the Edmonton Oilers Farm Club. Lots of focus on Oilers prospects Caleb Jones and Ethan Bear, but the 2014 fourth round pick Legison has really impressed this season that he has. And now let's see, what do we got? Nothing else about anything new. So for right now, as it stands, I don't have any news on the Bakersfield Condors Andre Sekera front from the Oilers officially. So Sekera, as I said, a plus five in two games. Well, obviously that means maybe, just maybe he's keeping up to pace of play here in the AHL and he should be good to return to the NHL slate, right? You're not a plus five because you played six minutes each night obviously not let's go get the game sheet for Andre Sekera here and see what he did last night in terms of uh in terms of stuff there we go 2018-19 schedule should have had this already but you guys know me I'm a little scrambly at times so it's the way we rock it against San Diego there it is bang bang and we want the box score yes we do box score for Andre Sekera where is it we don't have time what the heck is going on with the AHL here they do not have good enough stat lines. Okay, hold on. We'll try this again. And buy tickets. Superhero night. Really? Okay, so I can't find the stat line there. Um, let's go to... I don't even know where to find the stat line, guys. That's that's embarrassing. But So, Sekra, there you go. That's the two games played, f plus five. Things look positive there. Now, the next guy I want to talk about, because there's a couple of guys right close to each other in terms of who's doing what in points... Ryan Spooner, right? All of a sudden, we've kind of forgotten about Ryan Spooner existing other than he's a cap hit that really hurts this team when it comes to activating Andre Sekera. Well, maybe moving him's not quite as much of an issue as we think, especially based on his performance in the AHL so far. Six games in, six points. Yeah, you know what? He's an NHL caliber player playing in the AHL. That's a given. But the thing is, for Ryan Spooner coming to Edmonton and getting absolutely crapped on, for being the Jordan Everly replacement. No one said he was a Ryan Strom replacement. It was always about Jordan Everly. Well, guess what? With Ryan Spooner, the key is getting confidence here. And that gives the Oilers maybe a nice little option to get him out of town for a fifth or fourth round pick. I know. All of a sudden, now I'm already opening it up. Now it's Jordan Everly for a fourth round pick. Just bear with me. Honestly, removing that $2.1 million cap hit that is... Ryan Spooner at this point would be very, very huge for this team. He's a plus six down there in the AHL, so he's been impactful. And on a, what, 12-game winning streak when you've been part of six of those games and you've got six points, everyone kind of looks at you like, huh, maybe this guy's not totally a lost cause, right? If, if Ryan Spooner went down there and in a 12-game win streak, he played half those games and only had a point, and I mean... We're winning 7-1 on our Bakersfield down there in the AHL every night. Suddenly you start asking yourself, oh, oh no, he doesn't look that good. Uh oh, that's maybe an issue. That might be an issue. Well, no, he's got six points, so let's hold steady here and maybe think it's another option, right? We've got that option to trade Ryan Spooner 
if he continues to show in the AHL that he's regaining his confidence and could be useful for some team's future plans or some team's maybe immediate needs, right? If you've got a team that's down the stretch, got some cap space in a playoff run, but they've got a key injury, like not a Minnesota, not that kind of key injury, but a third or fourth line key injury, and they're looking to plug that gap till that guy gets back and use a guy who wants to prove himself and be part of the long-term future, that's the kind of trade the Oilers should be looking for in a Ryan Spooner trade, unless you're package dealing them, but literally you're just bringing down the value of yourself at that point. Now, Another kid down there for the Oilers, Kyler Yamamoto, 5 goals, 5 assists, 10 points in 17 games over the course of the season, right? He's back down there after a little bit. And for Yamamoto, it's it's literally just playing the big man's game as a small guy. And we've seen parts of that in the preseason, right? I think, was it against, was it early in the season? or I think it might have been a game against Dustin Bufflin at some point, probably the preseason, when he squeaked under his arm, literally. Kyler Yamamoto just skated under Dustin Bufflin's arm, if I, I believe I've got that correct. But anyway, you get the point, right? Play a big man's game, get to the dirty areas, get to the hard-nosed areas. As a small guy, you're going to get rewarded, especially if you got a quick stick, which we all know Kyler Yamamoto does. So that's another option, right? As long as he keeps developing. And that's the thing. The next guy I'm going to talk about, because you guys seem pretty focused on him. A lot of you is a guy that I've focused on in trade talks as well in a guy like Tyler Benson. So Tyler Benson, 38 points, 46 games played for the Bakersfield Condors. Obviously, do you want to pry him away as a leader on this team to put him on the Oilers in a bad situation by most people's standards at this point of the season? Obviously, my gut reaction is no. But the thing is, if you do it right, you do it right. Obviously, you don't call up Tyler Benson and send down I don't know who would you send. You don't send down Zach Kazian or Kyle Brodziak, obviously. You don't send down a veteran. What you do is you send down Yessa Pugliarvi. Exchange a kid for a kid because that allows you to have that little bit of room. And I mean, no, with uh, Ty Ratty, depending on how serious things are for Ty Ratty, we'll find out right away here, I'm sure. But Tyler Benson for Yessa Pugliarvi. Yessa Pugliarvi, in his stint in the AHL, had a whole whopping four points in four games, right? Ryan Spooner type numbers. But Yessa Pugliarvi, he was playing a big, big man's game down there in the NHL. He got into a scrap. He was ready to roll in the NHL, ready to get back on the NHL roster. But if you send him down there with the sole target to say, hey, we want you to take this team on a deep playoff run, can you do it? You imagine the years of development that would add to his game in the span of the next whatever couple of months in the NHL. I think it would be absolutely phenomenal for Yessa Pugliarvi to go down there in exchange for Tyler Benson, and then you can kind of plug and play, right? Do you exchange then Joseph Gambardella for Tyler Benson if you want to switch things around? You can kind of play around a little bit, and I think that would be so huge for the Oilers just to have those options, and that's exactly what Bakersfield, with this 12-game winning streak, is doing. They're adding so many options to the Oilers' trade deadline plans, right? Now you've got Andre Sekra, who looks... By the stat lines, I, I wasn't able to see any video. He looks good. Okay, Keith Gretzky obviously going to probably make his assumptions and be able to say what he says about Sekra as well. But you got Sekra, you've got Spooner, you've got Yamamoto, you got Benson. Don't forget about Jones. Don't forget about Bear. There are a ton of guys down there on the AHL team. Joseph Gambardella just beast moaning as well. Cooper Marotti, right? There's guys, names that we all know that could be useful next season when it goes to rebuilding this roster. You imagine if you take an AHL Calder Cup winning team, bring half of them up to this NHL team that is the Oilers due to the cap crunch, get rid of a, quite a few guys, plug and play, you could have a completely different team next year, a team that very much so could succeed based on having the experience of a long season with ups and downs and of course a lot of highs to ride into a playoff year and then go for a cup run. That's what the Bakersfield Condors are looking like right now because you guys want to talk about Bakersfield. This is where it gets fun. Right now, as they stand, they are first in the Pacific Division, I believe it is called, in the AHL. Yeah, Pacific Division. So it's the Bakersfield Condors on top with 59 points. They've got a 641 winning percentage. Mind you, 
the San Jose Barracuda haven't exactly played all the games that Bakersfield has played. They've played four less as San Jose, 42 to 46, and everybody else has played pretty much a little bit less as well. But Bakersfield, you go on a 12-game winning streak, that's going to do a lot for you this time of the season. 160 goals for the only team with more goals for is the Stockton Heat and uh, San Diego goals, but they've also got way more goals against. And one other option is a guy in Shane Sterrett who's going to be a beautiful backup for the Oilers if that's how they choose to use him next year. The guy is just showing and proving out there. So guys, so many options for the Oilers at this point of the season thanks to the Bakersfield Condors. I'm Tyson, this is TV. I will catch you in the next one.